This is the act of Brenton Thwaites. He's very kindly volunteered his body for the following demonstration. After sugar enters the body, it splits into two parts, fructose and glucose, both of which make their way to the liver. Now once in the liver, the glucose is dealt with efficiently. It's either used immediately for energy or it's stored for later, like a spare battery. But the fructose half of sugar is very different. The liver doesn't have a system to regulate the fructose because it was so rare in nature. So it hoovers it out of the bloodstream whether it needs it or not. And if all our spare batteries are full, then it rapidly turns it into fat. Some of that fat is going to stay in the liver and you're going to have increased risk for insulin resistance and diabetes. What also happens is that this fat in the liver is then sent out into the bloodstream as triglycerides which can lead to excess weight, plus blocked arteries, and heart disease. Now, when we're eating lots of sugar and other carbohydrates like bread and pasta, we're producing lots of glucose. A hormone called insulin is released, which is like a key that helps to open our cells' doors so they can absorb all the glucose, remove it from the bloodstream, and burn it for energy. The more glucose in the blood, the more insulin is released. But the key point for us is that while this insulin is in the blood dealing with all the glucose, it tells our fat cells to hold on to the fat. It actually turns off our fat burning processes. So when we're eating lots of sugar, we're putting fat into our bodies via the fatty liver. Plus because of all the glucose, we maintain the level of insulin, which tells our fat cells to hold on to the fat. We can't burn off fat when insulin is around dealing with all the sugar. This is what may be happening to a huge number of the population. It's highly unlikely with Brenton, though.